plug welds in on this hinge plate that I've gone through there with a tiny little drill so I could put some little pilot holes in to start with and then I'll finish off I'll use this 3-8 drill bit some decent sized holes as you can see I've got four there and so that'll make a nice opening for me to then put a nice plug in and just pull it in that'll strengthen that up then I'll put a nice fillet weld on the inside of that down the back of that plate but whilst we're here on, on the finished bit of these uh, hinge plates and that I'll just show you the, uh, the top one there that I was doing the other day. And that up the top there, that's what I was on about the strength. That fillet welds, if you can see on the camera there, it's really, really flat and laid beautifully in there into that V. And it's filled it right up and it's come penetrated right through into the other weld on the other side. So that now is super duper strong and it won't break. But there's virtually no dress up much at all on this weld. I will clean it up so you can't see that it's been done. But the outer one there that's on the actual hinge barrel, I'll leave that. It'll look nice and factory. But that's what you want, that effect there when that's been melted in beautifully and you've, you've virtually got no clean up. That's gone in how I'd like it. And, and the part that I like about that most of all is the strength of it. I'm very happy with it. And I'll give you a little look. When it's done right, and you'll see the pin now, like it's, it's just got that just enough movement. And that's after everything's been welded in. It just moves and slides just nice. No slop, but it's just got enough movement there that it'll work really well and free once the door's on it. But that's the end result, what you want to achieve. So that's what I'm about to do now, is go back down here, finish the weld up on the bottom one, and then give these a dress up, and we'll plonk the door back on. Okay, so what I've got here, this is another a way of uh, making a, uh, a plug hole, if you like, if you're going to do stuff like this in places. You can use what is known as a zip cut. They're like a tiny hole saw, and they're a good thing. They work well in certain circumstances. Now, over there, I've used the drill bit there. You've got a comparison. So that's the, that's the one done with the, uh, the drill bit there, and the one beside it's done with a little zip cut. And what they tend to do, the zip cuts, they'll give you a nicer, cleaner profile. They'll cut, cut right down nice and evenly. Trick to them is you've got to keep, keep them very, get a new one, keep a sharp one on all the, there all the time. And the, the reason why I don't always use these, and I like sometimes to, um, to use a drill bit, what happens is you get places like along these, these pinch welds here, back in the day when they've been zapped together with a, with a big spot and they've just gone bang, 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 it tends to move and buckle it a little bit. And what'll happen when you go to use a zip cut, because the steel's not nice and uniform and flat, they'll want to tend to throw off. They won't sit where you want it on that spot weld. Um, you can get these, and they've got a little like a little pilot bit in the center of them. And you, if, you, if you get a tiny little drill bit, like something like that size, and you put a pilot hole first into your spot weld, then you can use a zip cut, and because they've got that little uh, pilot guide in the centre, this one doesn't have, have it, I've taken it away deliberately. But you can try to attempt to use them in that situation. But I normally like to just go pilot hole, I'll go along and just in these awkward spots, just to get a nice sharp punch, and the trick to it is, Center punch it exactly right, so you cut that spot out really nice and uniformly. So number one, get a nice sharp prick punch, bang, make your little your mark, grab your tiny bit for your pilot hole, go along, bang, bang, bang in your spots, and then 
come along, well I like to anyway, use a drill bit. As I say, because it's an uneven surface and these things are great, but they like a nice flat surface like I've got here. They'll cut in really nice and clean and they'll take away everything you want. But in these situations, because they're not really that good after the um, spot welders put these things together, you'll have thick and thin and uneven. These things really don't work as good as a drill bit. That's what I find anyway. That's the way I like to do it. But So if you're having an issue and these don't work, grab a drill bit and go with a drill bit and, that, and you'll get a good result. But places like here where that's nice and flat because I've made all that up and it's perfect, these are excellent for that. They do a great job, especially if you're going to do a plug weld because they clean right down inside the hole nice and uniformly to get that pool of weld right into the bottom of the hole. <laughs> It's come up nice, very beautiful, nice penetrated weld, nice and flat. Virtually no dress up in the end, that'll just be quick buzz over, ready for some primer, go on in. Better than factory there, real good. And just a nice size, 3.8 is a, is, a, is a really nice size for a, uh, a spot weld. But the zip cuts, they, they're, they're a tad bigger, I think they're like a 10 size drill bit. And they just have that really nice amount so you can plug that weld and you pull it in really good when you do that. As you can see there, it's gone in just right. But I got that MIG tune, I think almost absolutely where I want it to be spot on. And it just puts that real nice pool of weld in there, nice and flat. It's just like zzzit and she's done and it's good and strong. Okay, just going to go over and see what the progress report is on these hinges we're mixed up to. He's just about finished, I think. Yeah, getting pretty close now. I'm just doing those last little edges. Just want them to be really nice. Not too much off them. We wanted to keep it as um, keep it as, as original as possible. They, they've got the real factory look now, Mick. Yeah, what do you reckon, Pops? Yeah, no, good. They look real factory. You'd, you'd never know at a glance now once they're painted that those things have been off. And then what we'll do is next, we'll sit, a, sit the door back on and, um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Yeah, but you'd have to be pretty happy with them now, though. Yeah, and the door, I'm pretty, sh pretty sure the door's going to fit like a glove, mate. Like those gloves you got on? Yeah. Yeah, mate. Got your little girly kitty gloves on. Alright, so my side's on. Barrels are welded on. My door's fitting sweet. Um, everything's looking the goods. But we had some awesome news, and Matt has actually tracked down these original hinge pins. Now that is just awesome. So we've got two brand new old stock, never been used. Um, I mean, what can I say? Awesome work, Matt. And um, mate, if it was my car, I'd be doing the same as well. We want to try to get as many, like as many original parts as possible. Now the, there's only one problem with this: they are a different size to the aftermarket. 
and the diameter is that tiny little bit different. So we're going to have to cut these barrels off and then replace them with new barrels. So we'll head over to Steve's and uh, we'll make these new barrels. here at um, AR Engineering, a mate of our Steve's, machined up some barrels for the, the little Torrey. So we'll see how he's going with those and hopefully he's on the way with the job. See what he's up to. Hey mate, how you going? G'day Daryl, how are you? Yeah, good bud. That's good. How are you going? Getting on with it? Yeah, yeah, getting them sorted. Um, I've got all of them, they've all been machined by drilling, but the drill is um, slightly smaller than what's needed for the pin. So in order to get the pin size correct, we've got to um, file the... Um, inside of these out is, is the most economical way for us to do it. We don't have a um, fixed ream that's the right size. So um, the main part is, is you've got to try and keep a constant pressure on the file, making sure that you're keeping that, that barrel nice and straight so it doesn't hourglass inside there, so to speak. And um, yeah, making sure that it fits. So we've done one here earlier. Okay. And um, we've, we've already drilled and filed that one out, so it's nice and neat. Nice and precise, mate, looks yeah. good. No, no hourglassing on it, it's nice and firm. Okay. True fit. Same old story, mate. You want something right, it takes time. It does. It does. Yeah, so it's a, it's, it's a little bit intricate, but yeah, once um, once you get going, it um, comes out pretty easy. It's only, so, I think it's about 0.1 of a mil we're trying to pull out of the inside of that, that okay. barrel. All right. So you've knocked them up on the lathe to start yeah, with? Yeah, we drilled them out. So the, the closest drill that I've got is a 1764. So it, it drills over slightly bigger. So you end up with, um, I think I think when this drilled out, well, that, that's 1764th is about 6.7, 6.66. Right, eh? Once, um, once it's drilled out, it goes slightly larger than that. So it goes out like seven, not quite seven mil. Yep. And um, what we're chasing is, um, I think it's um, 7.1. Odd size, mate. It is an odd size. Very odd size. It is an odd size. Like 7.1, when you turn it over, it's not really a, an imperial, imperial um, size either. Yeah, it's in between. It's like 932nd, which... Yeah. Which to me isn't a common size. Yep. But mate, a man of your capabilities, I'm sure you'll get that done. Won't be an issue. A little, little bit of a process, but <laughs> we'll get there. But yeah, no, Steve's a real good mate of ours. Ours, he's been um, in the in the trade for a long time. Workshop manager here at ARs. Pretty much when it comes to lathe work, any metal work, any weld machine work, you've done it, Steve. Yes, yeah, we've done quite a bit. We do all different. We mainly do farm machinery, but we, we do dabble in a bit of this sort of yeah. stuff as well. How long have you been at it, mate? I've been here 30 years. Wow. <laughs> Nearly, not quite. That, you, you've done your time. I have. Yeah. yeah. You, you're still enjoying it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. It's a good trade to be in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's excellent. It's a good community. Yeah. yeah. Get to see a lot of stuff. Wouldn't be here if it wasn't, eh? No. True. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, no, so Steve will finish knocking these up. Yeah. Get a grind one for you because I don't think they have that size as a fixed ream. Yeah. So, um. Oh, that one I've always got a center in there, we won't worry about it. Another center in there. So, in order to get the, um, the right size. Mate, the old lathe work, do you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. lathe, good. Yeah. yeah. It's not really my trade, but I'm, yeah, I'm self taught. Sort of Jack of all trades, mate. Yeah. So you just come up to it so we can zero off to get our length. So we need 15 mil, I think, for a short, short one. Give it a touch. Like that, but also we've got a true edge.
little by little. Little by little, and then we'll zero that off, and then just add. So we need three mil for our tool whip as we're parting off, and then we need 15 for a small bush, so we get to um, 18. Absolutely precise, mate. Yeah, well, that's the best. The yeah, more most accurate way to part something off. Yeah. Grass. Yep. Like I mean, you could store it, or that's not really accurate, but. Yep. But that you know, you get that spot on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll get you 18 mil. There Lock you the go. Table off. Where I'll, you go? I just find the drill and need to catch it. Yep. Put a bit of coolant on it. Manually part it off. And that's our, that's our bush. Should be should be 15 mil long. Oh, there's a speed one over there. Get you 15 mil. Beautiful. Like a bought one, mate. Then just file them up and clean them up so there's no sharp edges and, and file that center out. Done. Just goes to show you gotta know the right <laughs> people. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Good work, mate. Spare one. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Beauty. All right. As long as you're happy, we're happy. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's good. And there you have it. It's as simple as that. If you've got the right man on the right tool, not a problem. You can get those machined up and done deal. Challenging part of trying to get that bush nice and parallel is, is trying to stop it from rocking as you're filing it. So you get a um, you get what you call an hourglass, or what I'd call an hourglass effect. It's it's tapered at the end of the bush, but if you can keep it nice and straight and a firm pressure with your thumb up against the file, yeah, you can take that centre bit out and keep it as, as parallel as you can, as long as you're rotating the bush as you do it. So basically, it's just just the the centre or the guts of it, Steve. You want to get nice. What well, you're and trying to keep parallel, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. To make it a true bush. So you're not tied in the centre and loose on the ends. No, that's correct. Yeah. That's yep. correct. Yeah. That, that's that's what we're trying to achieve. Yep. Um, I mean. Without, without having a, a fixed ream, that's the only way to achieve. Any shop would have to do that, what you're doing there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, it's back to doing it old school with a file. Yep, bit by bit. Till you get it to fit. Funny, isn't it? And Nelly always gets down to the old, back onto the old hands. Yeah, back to manual. Yep. Manual tools is the, is the most effective. It is. Grab and move on there, keep your file clean. Is that a bit of hardened, mate? A bit of bright, that stuff, or not? Ah, uh, no, just just 1045, which is a mild steel. Yeah, yeah. yeah something yeah. that you can weld and won't go hard on you. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. You, you, your hinge doesn't actually rotate in these two little ones. It'll more rotate in the larger one. That's right. It? Spot on, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where there's more surface area. Yep. That's how they, exactly how they work. Yeah. So, and yeah. That, yeah. and they just tap, when those pins tap in, they just pick that, um, that end up yeah, so they won't... Up. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Doesn't rotate, yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah, and then they obviously they must have some sort of a groove there for a lube, um, turn or something. You'd have to think that's all. Would, they don't have any grease nipples. Nothing, or mate. No, no. no. It must be just when you pre-lube them, it must hold the lube in that. Yep. In that um, notched out section in the pin. Bit of the old red grease, mate, as they go in. Yeah, yeah a bit of grease in there would, would do wonders. And um, yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure once these are on, trick is too. You know, we don't overcook and weld them on. Yeah, that's distort them that little bit. Yeah, if, you, if you've got any them laid into them, you'd pull them out of shape real quick. Real quick. Yeah, yeah. you'd be very careful. I see that in your last video, you guys were. Yep. Which is, a, which is a really good thing to keep in mind when you're yeah. welding, is, is don't overheat things because you'll shrink. Yep. You move, metal moves pretty easily when it's overheated. Especially that, because there's not much there. No, there's not much there. I yeah. found one of the keys to it is leave the pin in it. Ah, yeah. I grease them up, leave the pin in. So you can get it out. Give it just the right, and then you give Up her a tap. Get your pin out try it and in the end if you do it right you can just just move those pins just nicely yeah well that's yeah. what it should be when you yeah. finish this is a nice uh, nice fit perfect fit so overcook them mate they'd be just you'd be oh you yeah, just then you, then you start doing damage by hammering pins in yeah you, you're going back to starting yeah, again yeah you get back to square one yeah with the old dodgy pins you put in there before 
trick to it all is just have that patience. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I mean, you know, it, once it's done, it'll last as long as what the old age of the vehicle. I mean, the pink, them things are probably originals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a few accidents in miles. And <laughs> <laughs> You've done a bit yeah. of damage to them. Like me, mate. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, 30 years on the job, mate, you would have done everything in this shed and yeah, every, done a lot of stuff. every job. And yeah, done lots of things, yeah, yeah. Started in working in here in, in, in manual labour and then, yeah, moved all the way up to management, so. Yeah. How do you like being the boss? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It has its challenges, but yeah. it's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it has its challenges. But good, it's good crew of blokes? Yeah, pretty good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Can't complain, all, all good. Yep. Good fellas, yeah. End of the day, as long as everyone's happy. Yeah, exactly, that's yeah. right. Yeah, and I mean, you know, people wouldn't be working here if it wasn't a good place to work. True. Long-standing staff too. Most of the guys have been here quite a while. So. Thirty years. That's a long stint. Yeah, I'm not the only one. There's people in this business that are here longer than me. Wow. Yeah. Bloody hell. That's had, that says it all. Had, yeah, we've had past people like um, that have been here and done their whole life here. You know, started as a young, you know, 15, 16 year old back in the day and retired. Here. Yeah. Bloody hell. So when you kicked off, what was your your initial duties here? Um, just welding, fabrication yeah. mainly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Originally when I first came here, yeah. 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 You so, progressed on, mate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been a few, yeah, there's been a few staff through in the time, but yeah, the majority of them are through retirement. Yeah. And the beauty of it, you've got some, you know, a lot of gear in this shed too. Yeah, a lot of older stuff, but you know, it's in good stuff. Good keep and it's, yeah, yeah. it works and does what it's, it's meant to do, so. Yeah. And I think, I, put me personally, I'd rather the older gear. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. better. Oh, yeah. It, it, Built better, built stronger, built, built more precise. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, it's, just, it's hard, eh? Like, you know, some of this stuff has become obsolete. You know, you know, you know don't use it anymore. Old turret lays and stuff, but I mean, it's ideal for what we do, making bushes and stuff. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Even, I suppose, the other side of the coin is, mate, if you want some a part for it, you'd nearly machine the bit you we need. We make them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so make it's them, a win win. Make them to repair them because you can't buy parts. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's a go. Some of this new crap, it's it's crap. Yeah, some of it is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Some of it is. You know, no, mate, mate, it's good to get the experienced, how would you say, view of it all. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Show you something that we do here as well. So we make an irrigator and we um, we um, rob a bit of um, energy off the irrigator from the water coming through. and We make an impeller. So we make a stainless steel impeller. Wow! And it's all manually machined with a um, dividing head that drives off the end of the milling table. So we happen to get a hold of a um, an old milling machine that that came with um, with one of those um, multi-purpose um, dividing heads on the end of it. So that's what they start out as, mate, and that's what they turn into. That's yeah. What we make them into, yeah. And yeah, that's so it's 316 stainless, so it's done on this old mill over here. There's actually one in there actually. There's one in there that we've started milling. The okay. guy's actually going on holiday, so um, when he comes back he'll finish that off. Wow, that's that's incredible. Shit, that comes up well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, For, um, yeah just manual manual lay. Like ideally you probably should do it on a CNC, but I mean, we, we whack them out on that. Oh, Especially good. in stainless, that's come up well, mate. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It, it machines it quite well. Yeah, so that, that becomes an impeller. Yeah, that's an impeller. So it drives. We have a diffuser in front of it, and we um, we divert the water so it hits at 90 degrees to the to the blades. So yep. we, um, we we rob drive off there and, and put a hydraulic motor on the back of it to make our um, our irrigators drag along, pull themselves along. No, no. With hydraulic power, which we yeah we we grab the energy from the water flow. Yeah. So there you go. That's just another little thing that they do here. All sorts of goodies to play with.
Mate, she's a doozy, this old girl. Yeah, yeah, it's old Maxim. How old do you reckon that is? Oh, it's pretty old, it's a lot older than me. It's bloody massive, isn't it? Yeah, it's been in a few, it was, it was across the middle of the workshop and then they moved it here to give access through the middle of the workshop. Yep. But yeah, we mainly use it for pump column, long column. How long's the bed on that? Oh, I think it's about five, I think. Okay, she's a big girl. Yeah, they classed it as a five meter, I think. Yeah, yeah. Point five or something. Yeah. Mate, I believe you've uh, got a little bit of a project of your own. I do. I, I've got a, um, a VK, uh, an X Pursuit car that I purchased as my very first car. Had it, owned it for quite a while and then um, sold it on to a mate who sold it on to another fella who ended, is, um, is a relative of my wife's and then um, I brought it back and my plan is to do similar sort of thing as what you guys are doing, is, is rebuild it. And yep. So my next project actually is building a shed where I live so I can <laughs> do it, but yeah. So you had it, what, your first car? It was my first car, I had it, oh, it was an 84 model, I bought it off of a, um, off of a Raffi, and um, it was 84 and I must have bought it, it must have been about three or four years old when I bought it. Right eh? And then I had it, I had it for about 10 years and then sold it. A mate had it for um, probably about similar sort of vintage, seven or eight years I suppose he had it for, and then um, he sold it to another guy, and, yeah, and then I come about that, it, yeah, I got it back. Bought it back. Bought it back a couple of years ago. And is it holeless bolus or bits? So, or? He, he, he had started rebuilding it, so it's Righto. totally stripped. It's just a shell. Yeah. Is yeah. it? What's it like? Good, rusty? Oh, or? it's pretty good. It's, it, it, it's, um, it's got a couple of little dings in it. It's got a little um, little bang in the quarter panel and a few bangs underneath the floor. But yeah, all in all, it's a pretty solid vehicle. Yeah. It's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all original numbers. And yeah. So yeah, it'll, it'll be it'll be a good thing when I get it done. Righto. So um, yeah. you you just go back to factory with it or? Oh yeah, I'll probably do a few mods to it. I'd like to put like maybe just do it like a white group A, you know. Yeah. You know, because it's never going to be a brock, but you know it's got L34 heads and all that sort of stuff on, or L31 or whatever they got on the. Still go very nice. Yeah, it'll be a nice car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a four-speed manual, so. Oh, nice. It's got a 10 bolt diff in it, so it'll be um, yeah, it'll be a nice. Got all the goodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'll just put a set of wheels and maybe a, a boot spoiler and chin spoiler on it. Yep. Too, too wild. Mate, the car thing, it's probably, good fun. Probably put, put air conditioning on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have that. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, no, yeah. it'll be a good thing when it's done. Once you get the shed up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the next thing. Time and money. You got it, mate. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, we better get out of here, mate, I suppose. Thanks, mate. No worries. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dale. Good job, mate. Cheers. All right, Steve. Thank you, mate. Cheers, Mick. And um, we'll see you in the next episode, mate. Definitely. Thank you.
so we're back in the workshop now. Now I'm just gently filing out those barrels, as you can see. And I'm just going to make sure when I file them like nice and slow that I'm keeping that barrel just turning as I file it back and forth. Now the reason why, as Steve was saying, we don't want it to hourglass, so what he means by that is we don't want to file, file low spots into it or make, make it all uneven. So, so it's nice and perfect. We're only taking out very minute just so that pin's going to be nice and tight. So once I've done one, I need to do all three, like so. So that's how you've got the ends on the door and then you've got the middle section there. So we've got one done just here and you can see how nice that fits. Nice and tight, it's not loose. And that is with a genuine pin and they're actually brand new pins as well. So I'm not sure where Matt got those from, but yeah, awesome work, Matt. That is, that is absolutely cool as. More genuine parts in the car. And we did hear something else pretty exciting. We, we'll bring that up on the next episode, but he's tracked down more genuine parts, which is pretty cool. All right, so I'll get this done and then we'll go around and see how Pops' door's fitting. All right, Pops. See if we can get her on. There we go. Mate, it's your big day. Hinges to sit in where I want them to. Yep. Put that bottom one in. Just go down a bit, Nick. How far? No, hang on. Need some. It's fitting pretty good by the sounds of that. Nice and tight. Slides, just right, do you want me to close mine or do you want yours? No, just, just hang quiet, I'll get a pin in. Roger. Sounded pretty good when you were putting that on actually. One pin started. Second one started. Nice. Now you just take, keep the weight of that mic and I'll yeah, yep. just tap in. Got it. Always a little bit tighter towards the end to tap in. That's just Very the nice. nature of the thing. Get a little bit more here in the bottom. And, uh, that it? In. Had that nice sound too. Yep. No pressure on your on your pin there. How does that feel? Okay, so I've got the door back on. I'm happy with the way it sits, but what I've had to go through to get it to this point is I've taken fairly big pieces out of this door pillar, made new bits up, replaced those, um, repositioned and repaired the old door hinge plates. It's had new um, barrels, top and bottom, and on the door pillar side and the door side of it, it's had new pins in it. So they're all back on, all fully welded on now. And then I've just had the final little technical adjustment there with a striker to get it to sit right. So that door's now got all its trinkets back on it and it's shutting really, really nicely. It's got that nice, just that first nice gentle click, second one, click shut. It's sitting in beautifully and sealing. The gaps are really nice, no stress on the door whatsoever. So a little trick to a, a really nice door fit up is to when you go to open the door. So, you know, this inner handle, I just give that a, the tiniest little tug on it and away it goes. The door comes open nicely, just enough stress on it that the, the door seal lets it pop off just that little bit, not too much. And then you want it so when the door shuts again, it's just as simple as that. Or good indication is just a little gentle flick shut 
does that, doesn't stress the door, seals up really good. So that exercise on that whole door from the very beginning to the end now has worked because of the patience and the time to do that correctly. Having all the nice new bits to go on, as I say, all the trinkets, it's all back on. And that now is a perfect door fit up. That will go for a long time again. It'll go for years, literally. And you don't want, another thing is when you, you fit these sort of doors up, when you open them, when they've had new pins and barrels, you don't want stress when you go to open that door. See that opens nice and freely. It almost wants to open and shut itself. That's what you want because if you've got any stress on those pins and barrels, when you go to open that door, it'll chew in. It'll almost chew itself to pieces in the end. So the setup that I have at the moment, you can see that door will just move really freely. Uh, and that's how you want it. And it's the same when it goes to shut. It shuts itself virtually with that lovely seal. But I'm really happy with that. It's come up the way I'd planned. So I'll now move forward. I've got my quarter almost where I want it with the gap a little bit more fine tune there on the edge because of the previous um, bad workmanship that it had, but I'll, I'll address all that. So now I can go, I'm, I'm happy with the door. The quarter will come right, so now I can move forward onto the guard. But that's the door fit up at this stage. The next thing will be down to the body work on it but it's done and it's a good job done. All right, Pops, I've got one more weld to do just here. Same story, I'm trying to keep the heat down as minimal as possible. Yep. So I'll give this a bit of a, oh, my bad. Hit the switch a bit early, mate. Yeah, you like that. Someone's got to be, mate. All right, I'll get this done. One really nice weld. Bing bada boom. All good. Beautiful. Right. Finished dressing that up as well. I'll yep. just take that out of the way so you can have a sticky there. Rightio. Righto, so what Michael's done here on, on the back of this door was uh, remove, I'll come right in so you can see these things. He's removed the, uh, the base or the actual hinge plate off the door hinge on the door side. And they're a two-piece thing, basically, these hinges. You've got your barrels, then you've got your hinge plate. So these were a mile out of alignment, these barrels. They were worn. So what he's had to do is take those hinge plates completely off the door because when they're actually welded, those barrels, they're welded top and bottom. And to weld them back on, if you remove them, you've got to get in underneath that barrel and you cannot do it on the door. So that's why he's had to remove the plates to, when he's had to the fit up again with the barrels to get in under. He's had to pre-weld those barrels on before he's fitted those hinges back onto that door. But now that he's done that, they're all back on. They're aligned beautifully. You've got a straight edge there, Mick. We'll just show you a little trick, what you need to do if you're going to do these things. So you want a good straight edge to run along those barrels, the edge of those barrels. And once they all line, and they're exactly in their right spot, and I mean exactly, because if they're not, you'll have ongoing issues with your hinges and your pins, because they don't turn and they don't align the way they should. But if they're on really nice, and they match the barrels on the car, that'll be his next little job. Yeah. Once that's done, um, they fit really well, Mick. Yeah, they, well, that there is done perfectly, so that's so important. And, um, you know, over the years working with the Pops, he's like, puts that in your brain, get the doors right, make sure that those hinges are always square. If the doors are bent in any way, the whole door's not going to fit correctly. So you've got to check your doors, make sure they're right, which we already did before, it wasn't too bad. There's a fair bit of bulk through here though, um, which is a little bit of a, a mess, but we'll remove that. I'll just see what's under it. It doesn't feel like it's too bad on the other side. You happy with that, Michael? Yeah, it's perfect. Absolutely yep. perfect. I'll put that door back on. And I'm sure if it wasn't, Dad would be um, over here with a... Fine tooth comb going over that. Yeah, we're making sure that it's perfect as he does. And the thing is too, when you go to weld those little barrels on, they're not that big. Be very careful because you can have them 
almost perfect where you want them and you hit it a little bit too hard with the, the welder, a bit too much heat, yep. all of a sudden they're tweaked and you're back to square one. Yeah, just, and then, so then what happens is you put it on, you'll open your door and you're going to start to get bent pins. Bent pins and they'll snap or wear out really fast and then you, your door's doing the do -do 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 up and down. Yep. It's loose, worn out and um, yeah, back to stage. Stage and the thing one. is, you know, doing, doing it like this, you're not chasing your tail for days and days trying to get your door to sit right because then yep. you think, why the hell won't it work? What's wrong with it? That's ground zero there. That's where you've got to start. Very important, Pops. That's, that's Actually, everything's important what we're doing now. Yeah, very. So this is, yeah, we don't care about the, the looks or any of that. We'll, we'll sandblast all this later, all around the doors, door shuts, engine bay will be all sandblasted. Any bits of roughs will be sandblasted and then it'll be epoxy primed. So that's later, but for now, we need to fit everything so it's fitting absolutely mint, hey, Pops? Yeah, this, like I said, you can't emphasize this enough. This is very, very important. This is the beginning of the end of the, your lineup if you, if, of your door, if you like. That's how we look at it. Yep, so we'll, now, Pops, I'll, I'll just finish cleaning this up, make sure that there's no little burrs or anything. And um, yeah, we'll sit this door on. I'll cut those barrels off. I want to get this door on today, so okay. we'll keep into it. All right, good as gold. All right, mate. Dad, well, mate, we've found a little bit more stuff here. Yeah, well, we've opened the Pandora's box, obviously, on this car, but as we've got stuck into it and more and more and found out more and more, it just never seems to end with it. But it's got to a stage now with this car, and if you have a look here, you can just see it just never ends. This was just covered with bog, as usual, all covered up, and the outer skin, they've got like a support brace, the, these doors in the front of them, right through there, inside. It's like a two-piece thing. You've got your inner, inner and outer skin. And what's happened over years, the moisture's got between the inner and outer, sweated, rusted, and eaten this right away. And so what they have done is just fill it full of bog right across it. Through here was the same, just all bog and down right through, right around the corner there. So what we'll have to do now is get into this chop all the outer out, get rid of it right around the front of the door, down underneath. Then we'll make up a complete new panel, sandblast it all, replace that outer with a new bit and plug it all back on. But as I say, for this build, we try to work with the owner the best we can, but unfortunately, not Matt's problem. He was not aware of this car, neither were we to a degree. We knew it was fairly nasty. But as usual, the bog's been abused, and I mean abused, by some butchers, obviously, whoever have done this car. And I'm not going to mince words, that's what it is. It's been butchered, this car. So we're going to go about it now with the sandblast and get it back to how it should have been. And at the end of that, to conclude all that, keep it real and keep it right. I'll catch you next time. All right, Pops. 
All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode.